Hello again. So I don't think that I've built a circuit board from a schematic for a long time. I don't even remember when I did this last. And when you do something and you don't do it for a long time, you can make mistakes. And so I've made a few. I've been trying to uh, simply build this piece here. And I spent some time today doing this and it didn't work. In fact, I tried to make it twice and it didn't work twice. And I, I thought, this thing's all shorted out. It's not working right. Anyway, here's the uh, first one I did. And I'm quite proud of this because look how small and, and I guess neat it was and compact. And here is my error. As you see these dots, you think, oh, look at those dots. And you put the parts in the dots. And you think the dots are all islands, meaning each dot has no connection to another dot. But Look at this. You turn this thing over like this. Ta-da! And you see that indeed there are some little purple lines here. And what that means is these dots are all connected in the, the vertical direction. So the circuit I made was all shorted out. You can see that there are these little purple lines here that are going like that and like that and like that. Those are copper traces. That means these are all connected. So my circuit that I made then is going vertically and the FET is shorted out. This is all one vertical line and all the pins on that FET are all going to each other. So that's a good reason why this board didn't work. And I didn't know why. In fact, I built this board twice and I couldn't figure out why it didn't work. And then I thought about it and I thought, what if I look at the bigger circuit board? What could be wrong? And I looked at the bare circuit board and I said, oh no, it's all connected via traces. So that gave me a different viewpoint on how to put it together. And here's try three. So try three, I realized that all these things were connected vertically. And so I put the fed in here and I used the vertical lines to act as interconnects. And it didn't come out. I tried to make it all square. But in the end, I ended up putting in some hacks to uh, get stuff back to the positive supply here. So that's how it turned out. I haven't tested this little monkey yet, but I guess I'm going to connect it up to the V2, plate pin 5, V2 pin 5 of the, R, of the Drake R4B, and see if this little monkey will go. So, the way this thing works is like the schematic. And I just added as, in fact, there's a YouTube guy that I got to give credit for. He lives in Tucson. I forget his name, but he was the inspiration for this. This is what he dreamed up. He found the stuff in a, I guess he said an old Drake transmitter, and he built this, and it worked great. So I wanted to replicate his success. And this is basically an impedance converter where it comes in, on the high impedance here through a 10 puff cap goes out low impedance through SDR radio and that's this little guy right here the RTL SDR so been trying to make this work I actually when when my other board didn't work I actually kind of punted and I said well I found a low impedance point to tap off of the I think it was T5 in the Drake, which might not have a need for this board. This board, I think, would also amplify, so eh, we'll see how it works, if it works this time. So that is the story here. I want to bring the Drake back up on the screen here and show you where this thing attaches. And unfortunately, I closed that Drake when we found it here. Um, looking, typing, typing R4B in for search, and here it is. Okay, here's the R4B up on the screen again, and I found that this transformer T5 
Let's see which one's T5. Let's rotate this thing. Okay, there we go. T5 right here, yeah. So this thing taps. You can see it's the one with the little strange wire things here. And I found that tapping, tapping it on the secondary, which I think was there, was was useful. I could get some low impedance out of that into the SDR using like a 10 puff cap and it worked fine. But I still want to see how this thing will do. So if we refer to the schematic here, where our gentleman friend in Tucson, who is a new amateur radio operator, and he's a PhD, he's very smart, he wants to connect this thing. He, he connects his to, to pin 5 here on V2. That's where he puts his 10 puff cap. So that's what I'll try. And what I found was, well, okay, this goes in through here and hits T5, and this T5 will bring it into a crystal filter. So if you tap it right before there on one of these two taps, it's low impedance and it seems to work fine. So I tried tapping this directly into the RTOSDR. It did work. I did hear things on it. But I'm going to give his method a try and see if it's a little more grand. Maybe there's some amplification through that follower type amplifier. Uh, or is it one to one? I don't know. Well, let's try it. So I'm going to try his, uh, his impedance buffer and see how that works. Attach it here. So that'll be the next video. I did have a video where I was kind of mad <laughs> that it didn't work because I wired the board wrong and I deleted that video, but I should put it back up. Okay, well, look out for the next video and we'll see if this thing works together. Okay, thanks for watching. Have a great day.